If you have bought a stock in the company or a house in a locality, what made you make a decision to buy it at the price you bought it for? What do you think? That you paid more for it? Or much less? Was it because a YouTuber told you to buy it looking at the charts and drawing few trend lines or the price did not matter to you because someone told you that it is such a good quality company and the price does not matter? Well, if the only reason for you buying an asset is because someone else would be willing to pay a higher price for the same asset in the future, you are a fool and this theory is called a greater fool theory. But since you are subscribed to the better investor, you do not have to be one. The top secret of making money in investing is to pay much less, as less as you can for an asset than what it really is worth for, which Warren Buffett says as buying $1 for 50 cents. And to make sure that we do not pay more than what the actual value of a house or an asset or a stock is, we must understand how we come to this thing called the actual value. The art of determining the value of an asset, be it stock or a house, is called valuation. And who can be the better person to learn this from other than Aswat Damodaran, who is an investor and professor in New York University and teaches equity valuation to the MBA and finance graduates. This is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance, stock market investing and learning from billionaires. And these are top 5 lessons from the book Little Book of Valuation written by Aswat Damodaran. Lesson number 1. The Cash Flows If you are a learning investor, you must have surely heard the word called cash flows and to understand how to value a company, it is impossible to do so until and unless we understand what a cash flow is. It is compulsory for every company to release three documents for a general public. Firstly, the income statement, where a company declares how much worth of products did the company sell, how much was the expense, how many taxes did it pay and how much profit did it make after paying the taxes. This is the most famous document that almost all investors are more or less versed with. Second, the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a document where a company lists down the value of all the assets of the company and liabilities. If you don't know what asset is, asset is something that gets money in your hand and liabilities is something that takes out money from your hand. The last one and the one which very few people see is cash flow statement. Cash flow statement actually tells us that how much actual cash was there in our bank before the year or quarter started and how this cash was used in which all activities and after everything how much cash is finally left in our bank account at the end of the year. A positive cash flow means that there actually was addition to the cash balance in bank and negative cash flow means company has less cash than what it had before. But then you would ask, how is the cash flow statement different from the income statement? If a company makes profit, then the cash will be added to the company's bank account. Well not. Let us understand this with the example. A company may have sold 100 soap to its dealer. The price of one soap being $2. But the shopkeeper may have not paid all the $200 right now. The shopkeeper may have told you that he will pay only one fourth of the amount right now and rest at the end of the year. So in income statement, you will see that the total revenue, which is for how much did we sell our soaps, which in our case is $200. Let's consider cost of making one soap as $1. So the expense for making 100 soaps will be $100. So the profit comes out to be $200 minus $100, which is $100. For our example, consider that the company is debt free and our company has to pay 20% in taxes on the profit. So 20% of $100. Tax comes out to be $20. The net profit comes out to be that is $100 minus $20, which is $80. This is our net profit. But did this all $80 of cash came to your bank account? Let's see. In actual, you only received one fourth of the money. So one fourth of $200 is $50. And according to the income statement, you have to pay $20 as taxes. So after paying your taxes, you are only left with $50 minus $20, that is $30. So in income statement, you saw that the net profit is $80. But in actual, the company only has $30 of cash. 
इट इज ईजियर फॉर कंपनीज टू फज एंड कुक हाइपोथेटिकल नंबर्स इन इनकम स्टेटमेंट बट नॉट ईजी टू फज द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज ऑल द ट्रांजेक्शन दैट आर सीन ऑन कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट आर एक्चुअली हैपनिंग इन द कंपनीज बैंक अकाउंट विच इन केस ऑफ अ फ्रॉड और स्कैम कैन ईजिली बी चेकड बाई अथॉरिटीज दस इवन वॉरन बफे रेफर्स टू कैश फ्लो एज अ बेटर मेजर फॉर कंपनीज ऑपरेशन एंड कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट देन एन इनकम स्टेटमेंट फॉर दिस रीजन इट इज प्रूडेंट टू लुक एट बोथ द इनकम स्टेटमेंट ऑफ अर्निंग्स ऑफ द कंपनी एंड देन द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट टू सी द क्वालिटी एंड प्रूफ ऑफ दीज अर्निंग्स लेसन नंबर टू रिलेटिव वैल्यूएशन Ultimately there are dozens of valuation models but only two valuation approaches intrinsic and relative let's understand first what the relative approach is and how do we use it you go to a locality in new york city to buy a house there are these two houses next to each other selling for 1 million dollars they were built on the same day and they look just like each other when you inquire you find out what the rent people are paying who are living in them the first family is paying 20000 dollars and the second family is paying 30000 dollars which house will you buy Obviously you would buy the one that is earning higher rental income since the price of both the house is same. This is relative valuation. You compare two similar assets and see which is earning higher income to you in comparison to the price you are paying. Consider this now. First house is selling at 1 million dollars generating a rental income of 20000 dollars per year and second house is selling at 3 million dollars generating a rental income of 70000 dollars which will you buy now you take price and divide it by earnings so for first house 1 million dollar divided by 20000 dollar comes out to be 50 and for second house 3 million dollars divided by 70000 dollars comes out to be 42 decimal 8 this ratio is called price to earnings ratio and is very famous among investors for the first house ratio of 50 means that for 1 dollar earning every year I am paying fifty dollars to buy this business, so it will take total fifty years to get all my money back from the investment. Price to earning ratio for the second house of forty-two decimal eight means that for one dollar earning every year, I am paying forty-two decimal eight dollars to buy this business, so it will take forty-two years and ten months for me to get all my money back from the second house. I am getting all my money back from the second investment much before than the first one. so the second one is more attractive the thing that is true for a house is also true for a company you can compare any ratio price with respect to revenue of the company price with respect to the cash flow of the company and etc this looks very simple but we need to understand that just like the example of two house businesses in market may not be so identical one may be older and thus more experienced than other one may be more technologically advanced than the other one may have more debt than the other but more or less relative valuation is the most basic approach towards making an investment decision some of the key ratios to carry out relative valuations other than price to earnings are as follows price to book value book value is what remains when you subtract all the liabilities from the assets of the company and then divide it by the number of shares that are there in the market called shares outstanding lower the price to book value better it is indicating that the price is cheap price to sales ratio or price to free cash flow ratio it may so happen that the companies that you are interested to buy may not have any profits at all for example google until 2009 was making losses when comparing such companies price to sales ratio or price to cash flow ratio may be a better metric you do not have to pick up a paper pen and do the maths all these ratios are already available online you can just google them but the things mentioned above such as the experiences of the manager of the company the growth potential of the company etc are also responsible for giving a company a higher valuation ratio with respect to its peers which may be justified lesson number 3 the discount rate let's assume in 1970s two people were given a choice between taking 5 rupees today in the year 1970 or taking 5 rupees in 2021 the first one took 5 rupees today that is in the year 1970 and the other one decided to take it in 2021 the first one put the 5 rupees in bank and considering average interest rate given by banks to be 6% the 5 rupees in bank would have grown to 55 rupees in 2021 or 
he could have bought 500 gram of amul butter or he could have gone on a movie date with his girlfriend taking the luxury seat which then cost 1 rupees per person or he could have invested in berkshire hathaway the company of world's greatest investor warren buffett and those 5 rupees would have been 9700 rupees by 2021 in every case that you assume he is better off than the person who decided to take 5 rupees in 2021 this brings us to a very important concept which is the same amount of money has less value in future and this value decreases the more into the future you go that is why the things you could do with just 5 rupees in 1970s could not be imagined in 2021 with same 5 rupees in all the cases the 5 rupees in 1970s have compounded at certain rate because of which we are left with more than 5 rupees in 2021 in case of bank deposits this rate was 6% In case of Amul Butter it was at 10%. In case of investing in Berkshire Hathaway it was 20 decimal 3%. Discount rate is exact opposite of compound interest rate. With the help of compound interest rate we calculate the value of present money in the future. In case of discount rate we calculate the future value of money in the present. Which means to say in 1970s you would say If I was to have 55 rupees in 2021 what is that money equivalent to today if discount rate is 6% and the answer would be 5 rupees what would be the present value of 250 rupees of 2021 if the discount rate is 10% the answer is 5 rupees what would be the present value of 9700 rupees of 2021 if the discount rate is 20% answer is 5 rupees there is a mathematical formula if you want to know more about this but you are better off using some online calculator for the same just look up for the term called present value calculator in google and you can find plenty of them just like you can find compound interest calculator this word called discount rate is many a times used by analyst so next time they use it you won't be a foreigner to it lesson number 4 intrinsic valuation of the company intrinsic value of a company is the sum total of all the cash flow from present day until the last day of a holding any free cash that a business generates can either be reinvested in the business or can be distributed to the shareholders in the form of dividends if it is reinvested in the business then over time the book value per share which is the difference between liabilities and assets will increase because reinvesting in business means buying more assets these can be buying plants machines acquiring other companies etc as the assets increase and liability remains same the book value per share will increase so if we say that the company is going to survive for 10 more years then the intrinsic value of the company will be the new book value after increase in the book value per share plus all the dividends given by the company in these 10 years per share so let us understand this with the example of krbl which is a global manufacturer of basmati rice here is a list of all the historic financial ratios of this company i have got this from morningstar.com what we are interested in is the book value per share as you can see 26.61 per share in 2012 to 144.86 per share in 2021 which is 20.7% annual growth in book value per annum now we have to predict whether the company can continue to grow at such a pace for next 10 years to be conservative let's take from here on the company will start slowing its growth rate and would only grow by 15% in next 10 years so if we do that this is how the book value per share will be increasing at the end of 10 years becomes 586.04 so we consider in total how much of the money have we reinvested in the business at the end of 10 years we come out with 441.18 rupees now we need to understand how much dividends would be paid in the next 10 years as the company matures and it starts having more cash in the balance sheet the dividend increases with time as a conservative investor we take that the dividends remain same as they are which is 2.5 per share per year so in 10 years the total dividend paid would be 25 rupees now adding the money reinvested 
एंड द डिविडेंड्स गिवन वी कम अप विद फोर फोर्टी वन डेसीमल वन एट प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव विच इज रुपीज फोर सिक्सटी सिक्स डेसीमल वन एट एडिंग टू दिस आर प्रेजेंट बुक वैल्यू फोर सिक्सटी सिक्स डेसीमल वन एट प्लस वन फोर्टी फोर डेसीमल एट सिक्स विच इज रुपीज सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड इलेवन पॉइंट जीरो एट सो एट द एंड ऑफ टेन ईयर्स दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द अमाउंट जनरेटेड बाई द बिजनेस रिमेंबर द डिस्काउंट रेट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट वॉट इज सिक्स हंड्रेड इलेवन पॉइंट जीरो एट ऑफ ट्वेंटी थर्टी इक्विलेंट टू टूडे सो नाउ यू मे आस दैट एट वॉट डिस्काउंट रेट मस्ट बी कंसिडर वी मस्ट कंसिडर द डिस्काउंट रेट एज द एनुअल रिटर्न दैट वी एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट टेकिंग दिस एज टेन परसेंट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ सिक्स हंड्रेड इलेवन डेसीमल जीरो एट ऑफ ट्वेंटी थर्टी एट द डिस्काउंट रेट ऑफ टेन परसेंट कम्स आउट टू बी टू थर्टी फाइव डेसीमल जीरो एट विच मीन्स दैट इफ वी बाय द स्टॉक ऑफ के आर बी एल एट दिस प्राइस एंड द कंपनी कंटिन्यूज टू री इन्वेस्ट इन इट्स बिजनेस एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ इट्स कैश एवरी ईयर एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूट डिविडेंड ऑफ टू डेसीमल फाइव रुपीज एवरी ईयर दैट वी मस्ट एक्सपेक्ट एन एनुअल रिटर्न ऑफ टेन परसेंट पर एन एम फ्रॉम दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट एज वी कैन सी दैट द करंट प्राइस इज अराउंड टू फोर्टी फाइव रुपीज विच इज हाइयर देन आर कैलकुलेटेड इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू ऑफ टू थर्टी फाइव डेसीमल जीरो एट सो वी वुड नॉट बाई इट हेयर वी वुड ओनली कंसिडर बाइंग इट वेन द प्राइस इज सिग्निफिकेंटली लोअर देन आर कैलकुलेटेड इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू दिस इज जस्ट वन मैथड देर आर वेरियस अदर मॉडल्स टू बट ऑल ऑफ दैम डिस्काउंट द फ्यूचर कैश प्रोड्यूस बाई द बिजनेस इन टू द प्रेजेंट जस्ट लाइक आर एग्जाम्पल लेसन नंबर फाइव वैल्यूएशन आर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स रॉन्ग As you have seen that the calculation of intrinsic value requires us to forecast and predict a lot of things and in all likelihoods our forecast and predictions may go widely out of reality as future unfolds the operation of business may change which you must not have ever thought of who knows exactly if a company would continue to reinvest in its business at the rate of 15% and not 5% who knows that the company will continue to give the same dividends they may stop giving that at all and on top of that our assumption of discount rate of 10% from this investment may be over expectation it may so happen that the economic environment goes for a toss and returns we would have expected from the business should have been 7% in place of 10% therefore two people calculating the valuation of the company may come out with different intrinsic value it is for this reason that in the stock market some investors buy a particular stock since they think that the price is below the intrinsic value whereas some people sell the stock since they think that the price is above the intrinsic value also there is no need to be afraid of calculations and get demotivated all the calculations involved are elementary mathematics and can be done by any calculators available online and last but not the least we must not forget what warren buffett said when asked by an investor about his formula for calculating intrinsic value to those of you who don't know in early days warren buffett used to make money by selling newspapers warren buffett said if the investment decision that i have made in my life would have required me to use calculus and crunch numbers on calculators i would have gone back to selling newspapers let's have a quick recap Cash flow is the amount of cash that is added to our company's bank account. Net profit that we see in income statement may not materialize into cash flow. For this reason it is important to look at both the net profit in income statement and cash flows in the cash flow statement. Relative valuation is pitting two similar kind of assets against each other to see which one is better priced than the other one. Some important ratios are price to earning ratios, price to sales ratio and price to cash flow ratio. Discount rate is used to calculate the present value of an amount in the future. A particular amount of cash in the present has less value in the future and the value reduces further the more into the future we go. It is better to take $1 today than $1 in the future. Intrinsic value of a company is the sum total of all the future cash flows from present till the last day of the business discounted to the present value. Discount rate used to calculate present value must be taken as the rate of return expected from the investment. Most of the valuations are wrong. These include lot of forecasts and predictions that may never materialize. Two people having same data can come on to different intrinsic value and thus different opinions about whether to buy or sell a stock. That's it guys. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. 
Do leave a comment if you found this video useful. Feedbacks are most welcome. You can check out my past video about the book summary of concentrated investing. Until then, cheers guys.